Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. You are here to watch me do the modification of this late 60s, I believe it even went into the early 70s, uh, Bogan CHB50. So this is a, a PA amplifier originally, and I'll uh, give you a little tour. It's got a metal case, and these were made by a company called Lear Sigler. It's the model CHB50 series. I don't know a lot about the history. Uh, Bogan is still around. Early Bogans are way different than these later Bogans. This is a later, late 60s, like I said, even into the 70s Bogan. The quality is very different. I mean, these, I mean, compared to new stuff, this is still very high quality, but they, they definitely cut a lot of corners when they introduced this uh, Challenger series. I know they made a 100 watt, which was essentially this amp with two more power tubes. Uh, this thing runs uh, a pair of 6L6 GCs as power tubes. And um, it's it's not the most common version of these challengers. From what I've seen, the the most common one that I that I find of the challenger series is the CHB33. The 33 runs two 7868 power tubes. And it's almost identical to this amp. There's a few tiny little circuit changes because I think this one came. I think this one actually came out after it. My guess is uh, the, the this was a, a cost savings thing because the 7868s probably got more expensive. You know, the 6L6, a standard tube. I mean, even the GC was made from I think the late 50s. I'm pretty sure they were making them in the 80s for the uh, you know still for guitar amps. So uh, what I'm going to do today is uh, I'm going to take this amp. Uh, and a lot of times what I'll do with these amp conversions is I'll do, I'll gut it. I mean, I generally prefer to gut it. I like to replace everything that I can. You know, it's kind of like fixing up an old car. Same thing with the, an, an old amp. These old amps are all just like old cars um, in that they were designed to be repaired and that they're easily modified and that you can do amazing things with them as a platform that were never really intended to. I went through and already took this thing apart already pulled and tested the tubes. Uh, and uh, so I'll, I'll give you a full tour of the front here first. Mic input one, which is labeled as input two. We've got aux one and two, which essentially is a, a, a line level input. Turn this pot all the way this way, it, uh, it'll go to aux one. When you turn it all the way that way, it goes to aux two. Uh, you got a master volume, and then you have a bass and a treble, and then you have the power switch. There's no standby. This was originally for, for PA use. I mean, this could have been a paging amplifier for a grocery store. This could have been an uh, announcement amplifier for a bowling alley. This could have been used for, you know, vocals at a club. It could have been used at a auditorium at a high school. You know, lots of lots of different things. So um, you, you can tell this is probably late 60s, early 70s model. It came factory with a three-prong grounded plug. It's even got a grounded auxiliary power. Below this here, we've got a, a fuse block, which is holding a two amp slow blow fuse. And then over here, we've got this whole tag strip. Bogan had their own proprietary system for doing speakers. So you can see he's got these plugs and it says right, it even tells you right here what these pins are. Pin one is ground. Pin two goes to this wire and allows you to select four ohm, eight ohm, 16 ohm. And then um, the last three here have nothing to do with the speaker output. These are what are called the remote control. What they would do was they would wire up a remote box to this. I mean, obviously it says remote control so that you could sit in the audience, I guess, or maybe sit to the side of the house or, or whatever. You, you wouldn't have to be right next to the amplifier to adjust the volume. The remote boxes that would be wired up to this would have a pot that adjusted the amount of voltage going to the, the first preamp stage. But it would have a switch, an on-off switch, so you could remotely mute channels with this neat little circuit. And then of course you've got pin three here, which is a 70 volt. Uh, 70 volt would have been for like an array of speakers. If you had like a, a bunch of speakers in a stadium or something, each one would have a transformer and they'd all be fed off of this 70 volt. All right, and moving over here, uh, these are tapped off of the 16 ohm output. This high Z goes to a transformer. It's a 10K 
to 600 ohm transformer, this WMT-1 accessory, you would actually physically mount this transformer right in here. You would mount this transformer in a little accessory box with a little wire sticking out and it would plug into here. This uh, output here has been padded down. Essentially, you've got, you've got a padded output of the, uh, of the 16 ohm that you can uh, run to a tape machine or another amplifier. Aux one and two go to the front where I, where I showed you the aux control. Mag would, would connect with mic two to this switch and you could select either, a, this would be for a, a magnetic input on a, a record player or the microphone. So you could have two different mics or you could have a mic and a record player, which would have been a very common setup. These types of jacks are high impedance. I call them screw on high impedance. To continue the tour, I will go ahead and open this thing up. I will take this chassis out of the box. So this is the chassis we're gonna modify. Like I said, I've already pulled the tubes and tested them. They all tested great. I think it had its original set of tubes because it came with Bogan branded mullards for the preamp tubes and then RCA black plate 6L6 GCs for the power tubes. Isn't that fantastic? I saw the I saw the black plates from the back of the amp and that's why I was like, oh, Bogan amp. I'll, I'll give you a little more of a tour of what's left on here. The valve one is a 6EU7. The 6EU7 was going to be considered like a higher quality class of a 12AX7. Lower noise. The actual physical structure of the tube was a little different so that the heaters were further away and didn't induce hum as much. Lots of little details. I like the 6EU7s. I have a bunch of them. I'm gonna keep that. Everybody knows what this is. 12AX7 ECC83, the most common preamp tube probably ever made that they still make everywhere. Next is a 6C4 EC90. Essentially, it's half of a 12AU7. In this design, they didn't need both triodes for a, a phase inverter tube. They just needed one of the triodes, so they used this little seven pin 6C4. And then of course, uh, V4 and V5 are the 6L6 GC. Down here, we've got the output transformer. The numbers on them are 83-330-000-8317222. It's kind of hard to read through the rust here, but the power transformer says 83-655-000-606-0. Dash six oh six dash two dash nineteen. Then we got this can can cap here. Inside we've got these uh these big beefy hundred microfarad three hundred and fifty volts. These are used in the voltage doubler circuit. This thing uses a voltage doubler to get uh up to like almost five hundred volts for the for the plates of the power tubes. It's got this little ten ohm ten watt resistor going to ground. It's got these blue Coupling caps, the 0.22s are being used in the remote circuit that I told you about. The 0.1s are coupling caps. These go from the phase inverter to the power tubes. And then there's another coupling cap here. Then they're using uh, ceramics as coupling caps in the preamp. So here's what I'm doing with this guy. I've written down my modifications for this amplifier and I'll go through them with you here one at a time. So the first thing I'm going to do here is, and these first two go together, I'm going to convert the, the power supply from a voltage doubler to a full wave bridge. I prefer that for tone, and it lowers the plate voltage so that I can run 6V6s. That will give me the flexibility to run 6L6s or 6V6s in this amplifier. It'll also allow me to run lower plate voltage 6L6s. And this will correspond to another one down here where I've got make bias adjustable. This has got a fixed bias which is non-adjustable. Um, the most important thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna change the preamp stages from the grid leak bias, which I don't really like the sound of. If you're unfamiliar, grid leak bias, what it does is it takes a cathode and it grounds it, and then it runs a super high impedance grid resistor to ground. Now this one only runs a one meg. I've seen them run up to a 10 meg before in a grid leak. And then instead of having a, a, a grid stopper resistor, it's got a coupling cap. What this does is, and it was originally designed for microphones, not guitars or basses. You know, the, the voltage coming off of a high impedance mic is very low. It's much lower than for say a humbucker or even a single coil run through a couple of guitar pedals with boosts and this and that. So what happens is when the signal hits the, the grid leak 
bias stage, it's either clean or it's just gnarly. There, there's not like that lovely area where it goes from clean to gnarly. It just kind of flips quickly, but it, it lacks flexibility. Anyhow, I'm going to switch that to this fender style. For an instance, a 68K grid stopper resistor, a one meg resistor going from the grid to ground, and then a, a 1K5 cathode resistor uh, bypassed by a 25 microfarad capacitor, and then uh, some, you know, like a 220K plate resistor going to the high voltage, and then um, like a 0 0.01, 0 0.02, something in that range for a coupling cap going to the volume pot. The next thing here is change EQ caps for better guitar use. The ones that are in here aren't too far off of what I want. Just looking at them, they're using ceramic caps in that circuit, and I don't, I just don't like ceramic caps for audio. I, I get it that engineers that were trying to design this as a low cost PA were fine with it, but for tone, it's a lot like the grid leak circuit itself. It does its job, it's utilitarian, but it lacks a lot for tone. So those will get replaced. The circuit that it's running, it's a very common circuit. Any guitar amp that runs just treble and bass controls and is running in a high impedance. So the circuit's fine. The one meg potentiometers, they're fine. I just want to change the value of the resistors and the capacitors in the circuit to be better for guitar. Okay. So the next thing here is uh, move the master volume to after the EQ. The, the way they've got this wired up, both the gain pots for the, for the main channels, these are wired backwards and they feed directly into the master volume pot. I would, that doesn't, just doesn't make any sense to me. I, I'd rather put this after the EQ. All fresh caps, well, duh. So these, are, these will be gone. The can on the top will go away and those will get, those will get upgraded. All right. The weird connectors, those weird screw on connectors, and then the weird speaker jacks. Those are going to get replaced with just regular quarter inch switch jacks. The next one is make bias adjustable. It's a, a fixed bias style and it's running, according to the schematic, it's running negative 46 volts of bias to the grids. I mean, that's fine if that's the correct value, but it also makes it so that I have to run 6L6 GCs and I want to run different tubes. So I'm going to make the, uh, the bias voltage here adjustable. So I'll add a 10K linear pot and I'll actually add an extra stage of filtering. Uh, it, this, this design has a uh, 6.3 volt heaters for everything. And it does have a center tap. It's wound for a center tap and they just ground it. I'm going to raise it above ground and I'll show you on my modified schematic what that means if you're not familiar with it. I'm going to remove the remote circuit. Don't need it anymore. Oh yeah, I'm going to configure the, the gain pots correctly. We just talked about that. I'm going to keep the tube layout for the preamps and phase inverters. So even though I'm going to make this so that I can run different power tubes, I'm going to keep the preamp tubes. We talked about that. A 6EU7, a 12AX7, and a 6C4. I'm going to keep the aux inputs, and uh, that'll just make it so that you can run your phone with a cable right into here. Just because, you know, it's already got these jacks here, and I'm not going to cut them off. I'm going to just leave them there. Might as well leave the functionality. Uh, basically, instead of completely reinventing this amp from the ground up, I'm trying to make changes that if, if I worked for Bogan in the 60s when this was being designed, and they weren't so stingy about the budget, perhaps these are things I could do to make a more flexible product. You know, I don't want to put modern technology in here, really. You know, I'm obviously I'm going to have modern parts, but I'm not going to do anything crazy. I'm not going to have relays or uh, digital anything. You know, I'm going, to, I'm going to stay true to the original design. Uh, oh, yeah, this is a neat little thing. So there's this switch here that switched from the magnetic input to the mic input. What I'm going to do here, and I, I doodled it out just a little bit here to figure it. So we've got two inputs, and um, channel one will have, this, this is a switched quarter inch jack. It'll run to ground when there's nothing plugged into it. When you plug into it, it lifts the ground here. And then I'll have the switch go either to ground channel two so that it's the same as channel one or when you hit the jumper switch it ungrounds it and it hooks it up to this so that means if i'm plugged into channel one and i jumper it it's as if i'm plugged into both channels 
so that I can run the gain on both channels and you know they, they mix down to mono anyway but that, that gives me more flexibility right and then a couple other little things like I'm gonna add grid block resistors to the power tubes there are there are none in this circuit already um, it's got this weird thing in the circuit where it runs a high voltage through a big resistor to the feedback network and I actually asked some people online, I'm like, what is this? I, I, why do they have this in here? I've seen it in other Bogans and I never quite figured out why. I'm just going to lose it. I'm going to ditch it. I, I don't see a need for it in this circuit. It was probably had something to do with PA use. I don't know. This thing does not have test points. It does not have adjustable bias. It does have an adjustable balance for the power tubes, but there's no way to to see what you're actually doing. You just gotta kinda listen and guess. I'm gonna have a 25 volt lug, like I showed you back here. Well, that's not gonna be used for anything anymore. Well, it's not gonna be used for its original purpose anymore. So what I'll do is I'll repurpose that to be a, the bias test point. If you've got a voltage meter, you touch the black connector to ground and the positive connector well, positive. <laughs> it's going to be negative voltage. But anyway, that would be what we call test point three. You'll see that on the schematic. And then the remote lugs, remote one and remote two, those will be for either side of either power tube cathode. The whole idea of the balance is you want these tubes to be balanced. So if you have the test points from these two connectors, they should balance out to zero. And then, uh, oh, my <laughs> fix the B positive wiring. Man, I can't believe somebody thought that this was okay. It's so easy to just have that, oh, it's touching ground. Like, let's just let this wire float. I mean, I hate that. That's all the mods. Everything else that I do to this is just gonna be like normal uh, refurbishment or just, you know, getting an old amp back to new. So that's about it for right now. Uh, the next step is I'm going to start removing pieces from here. I'm going to drill the chassis to remove these jacks. I'm going to remove these guys. Then we'll start rebuilding it after I pull everything off. But uh, there you go. That's the intro. I uh, Stay tuned. There'll be another chapter of this very soon. Thank you all.